everyone, Amanda here. So today we're going to use one of these little fellas. Um, these are from Stampin' Up! and you can buy these in a set of four. What fun are these? So we're going to decorate one and make a little something to go in them. Lots and lots of possibilities. Um, they measure about two and a half by about three and seven eighths, I think. Let me just check. Yeah, two and a half by approximately three and seven eighths. Alright, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to put a little uh, book inside. So that's going to be fun. So I've already cut the pages to save time and I've just used copy of paper. Alright, so these measure when they're folded two by, what do they measure? Two by three and a quarter. So that's four by six and a half when they're out. Four by six and a half, then fold them in half. I've made two little bundles and I've got ten. I used ten sheets. You can use as much or as little as you want. Mine's quite thick because it's um it's laser copy of paper that I use for my journal making. But use what you want. You can use scrapbooking paper. Anything, scrap uh, bits and bobs you've got laying about, and we've just got two folded like that. Um, so I'm going to make a little cover for them and I'm using some recycled card that comes from the back of the DSP. Um, use some anything, bit of cereal box, bit of something, just to add a little bit of stability. And I've cut two pieces of card uh, paper here that just happened to have already been cut. I just lifted them out of my scrap box. So these measure six by four and a quarter but that wasn't done on purpose I've just lifted them uh, which side shall I have I think I'll have pink I think I like the pink one all right so each one of these measures let me remind myself I think it's two and a quarter two uh, no that yeah two and a quarter by three and a half all right and then I've got a little spine piece it's just to add stability and that measures have I done it half an inch by three and a half Alright, so we're just going to glue these down. I've got my glue. Okay. If you don't have any, um, you know, recyclable, love, have a look in your scrap. But, uh, everybody's got a tub of scraps. Use some scrap cards, some offcuts. So I'm just going to stick that on there. I'm doing it by eye. Um, okay, let me just have a look. I'll just move it over a little bit. I just want a kind of a gap all the way around, but I'm not really measuring it because it's just a little mini book. It's just for fun. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you are one of those people that's a little bit loves things to be perfect, then you can measure it, draw a line, and follow that. Okay. So this is a little bit bigger than what I need, but it doesn't matter. Let's have a look. I need that in there need that in the centre but what you want to do is you want to leave a gap between each piece so that you can fold your book without it all being cumbersome and the paper splitting as well alright so I'm just going to get that on there now ok and then I'll just take a minute to see if it's all kind of straight-ish that one's a bit wonky if you use wet glue then you've got time to just move it about. But like I say, it's just a little book, it doesn't have to be perfect, alright? Give that chance to dry and then obviously we just fold it over and we're going to cover that. Okay. Give it a good press and a good score like that. Alright, and then what you want to do is just trim off the corners, but don't trim right up to the card, otherwise um, you'll have a gap when you fold it over. So I kind of just go, just just a, a hair, you know, just, I don't know, it's not really a measurement, but it's not right up to the corner. <laughs> okay, so that you, when you fold it over, you can't see the card. Some people do this more precise and take more time over it. I'm not really worrying too much. Alright, so when that folds over, it should all just meet. Okay, what you can do is you can use your bone folder um, to just press them corners in so they fold a bit neater. Okay, so I'll just do that. Just give it a fold up. Okay, like that. Just give it a or you can just do it with the back of your thumb even, just press it. Alright, and then get it glued in. 
bit of glue. Try not to get my messy hair in the shot. I'm filming really early. I've not done my hair. I look like Kate Bush in a wind tunnel. But you know, nobody can see me, so it's fine. <laughs> Just hope it doesn't get in the shot. Right, so I'm going to um, fasten all of that down now. Just hold it while it dries a little bit. I don't want it to come undone. And again, if I need to just nip them corners in, I'll just nip it in with my thumb and then fold it over and press. Okay, just nip it in and fold it over. The weekend off work this weekend so hopefully uh, touch wood I'll be able to get some more crafting done and get some more interesting videos up sometimes when I'm busy working my videos aren't that interesting <laughs> some people might argue they're not interesting anyway but you know never mind still watch me though don't they <laughs> so it's all good oh dear me right so I'm just going to give that a burnish alright and then I'm just going to score down there so that that's done just gives that paper encouragement to fold when we've done right so now I need to um, cover that over so I'm going to cover it over with a piece that measures so I want a small border so I want it to be four and three quarters do I? yep four and three quarters by three and a quarter so four and three quarters by three and a quarter. Remind me because I'll forget. <laughs> three and a quarter. We'll do three and a quarter that way first. And then I don't forget by four and three quarters, which is that. Okay, we'll just save those. We might uh, use them bit, little bits of scratch. Might use them yet, we don't know. I don't know. Um, the, the only planning I've done is that. <laughs> the rest of it I'm making it up as I go along I think I'll have that grey the grey side so that looks nice doesn't it right so let's get that glued on Alrighty. and I'm going to show you a very simple binding we're going to do uh, a good old fashioned proper how they used to do junk journals before they started making us sew everything <laughs> <laughs> and we just used twine and ribbon and that's what we're going to do here because it just makes it quicker and it makes it easier um, not everybody's got the right tools or is able to or can see to sew or is confident but anybody can wrap some ribbon around some paper and tighten a bow okay so that's what we're going to do just to make it even easier so there's no binding there's no funky anything, it's as simple and as easy as pie. So we're just going to go back and rescore uh, where that uh, where them where the spine is. Just gently rescore, it'll just encourage that paper to fold nicely and then just gently start and lift it up and bend it. Just very slowly, don't go mad. You don't want to split your paper. Um, if you're doing it with wet glue, while well, it's what's still wet, it'll it'll be even easier. But be careful so you don't rip it at the same time. All right. Okay. So there's our little book cover. Okay, how cute's that? Let's hope it fits in ten. <laughs> yeah, it will. I'm only kidding. Right. So these, obviously, you could decorate them. You could cut up pieces of leftover scrap paper to make it more interesting. I've left it plain to be quick. And what we've got is we've got different kinds of ribbon. You can use um, seam binding, you can use just plain twine. Um, I'm going to actually use this, I think, which is the one that goes with this paper. It's the shimmer ribbon. It's grey shimmer ribbon and it goes with the with this one, whatever it's called. Um, yeah, forgotten. What's it called? Peony, something to do with peonies. That's as much as I can remember this early in the morning. Right, so, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get myself a length, alright. I'm going to put it through the middle of one of my, uh, these are a signature. When you hear people talking about signatures, all they mean is a bunch of pages. Alright, and then I'm going to put it in my book. And then I'm going to 
centralise it. I'm going to wrap it up and around my spine. And then I'm going to, I hope you can see my, I'm even in chat, yeah. And then I'm going to wrap it around the next one. Line them both up. Give it a tug. Alright. Lay it flat. Hold on a minute, let's have a look. There's that one in there. You want it kind of, don't need to be perfect, but you want it lying right. So I'm just going to make sure it's lying straight up the middle there like that. Alright, and you can do it in two separate parts if you want. I'm just going to do it like this for quickness, I think, am I? Or am I going to do it in two separates? I might do it in two separates. I think I will. I think I'll do it in two separates. I've changed my mind. <laughs> I'm allowed. I'll do what I want. Right, I'm only kidding. Um, <laughs> I'll do what I want. It's my, my book. Um, right, so I'm changing my mind and I'm going to do it in two separate parts. And, and then I can have it all nice and dangling down, I think. So what I'm going to do, let me just move that signature out of the way while I get this one right. Okay, just faff, I'll just, just go make a brew while I faff with this ribbon for about four hours and then we'll uh, we'll be done. So, <laughs> I'm only kidding. Right, and I'm not actually. Right, so let's just tie that in a knot, first of all. I'm faffing now. This is because it's early in the morning and I'm a little bit delusional. I've not had enough coffee yet. So I'm just going to lay that flat. Stop faffing Amanda and get on with it. I'll tie it in a knot. That will secure it. Okay. And then I'll just tie it in another knot for now. Until I decide what I'm doing. With it. And that will just secure our pages for now. Okay. Until I decide what I'm doing. And then also the, advan the advantage of doing your binding this way. Is that. I've tied that a little bit tight is that when the pages run out, whoever receives it can just slide it out, there we go, that's better, can just slide it out and put some more in. All right, so that's the benefit of it, of doing it this way, plus it's easier. So I'm gonna cut some more. Wrap it around and put it in my little burkey. All right, shut it. You can always adjust your pages after you've finished faffing for an hour with your ribbon. Okay, don't worry about it. Alright, tie that in a knot. Try and line it up. And tie it in a knot. I mean, you can do fancy bows. You could put little gems on. You can do whatever you want. Alright, so then what I'm going to do with mine is, now that I've got it where I want it, got it tight okay you can then move that ribbon around I'm just going to move it down to there all right and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim it to make it look like little faux bows okay so it'll look cute uh, don't worry thinking that I'm wasting this ribbon I'll use that on tags or something all right so don't worry don't waste anything me all right so then that looks like little faux bows then on the spine you could have one at the bottom, one at the top, whatever you want. All right, and then just move it around till you've got it right and your book shuts. Okey duck, like mine, there you go. And that looks cute, doesn't it? All right, so what uh, other thing you can do is, and what I think I will do, I think I will get a little bit of seam binding and I can feed it through the spine there. All right the spine and have that as a little a little closure how cute i love making little books aren't they cute such fun and so easy to do you can make these in no time if you don't faff like me um, but you get the idea okay just a little tiny book and then you can put it in your little tin okay and then just make that bow look a little bit less like the dog's jumped on it okay Move that around a bit. Um, it might a, 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 a tip that I'd give you here, just from me experiencing this right now, is wait for your paper to dry before you start tying your ribbons round because it's my card's a little bit soft there, and um, because it's not quite dry. So then that will just fit, just fit, just inside that little tin like that. You could add a little note card or a little sweeter, a little mini tag. I've got so many tags somewhere. Here we go. 
here's a little mini tag I could add that slide that in there with a little message okay I'm not gonna because this is, doesn't match it but I will I'll just slide that in there for now so you get the idea and then what we want to do is just quickly decorate the tin all right so let's have a look what can we do um, I don't know I've not got I've not made this bit up yet <laughs> I've got some uh, stamps here, let's have a look what we can make, I'll tell you what we'll do. First of all, I'm just going to stamp some script for a bit of a background, I think. I'm going to grab a, a block. Alright, this is the part where I'm completely and utterly winging it. I've not planned it, I've not done a sample, I haven't made one, I haven't got one I made earlier. It's not quite how I um, operate, I'm not that um, organised. Right, so yeah, that's, that'll do for me. Uh, let's get a slightly darker one to maybe stamp something else. Let's have a look what we got. Um, we'll have one of the. Shall we have one of the peonies? Might have the little one there. Look. Let's see. I might not use this, but I'm going to stamp one. I'm just going to use that block there because I'm too lazy to go get another. And I'll just stamp that there. I'm just using my scrap. Yeah, I think we might use that. I'm just thinking I might stamp that, re-stamp the, um, re the uh, script one in a, yeah, that's better, in a darker one. That's better. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'll just really quickly just trim that peony. Okay, just bear with me. Well, I'll make sure it's dry. I'm just going to really quickly fussy cut it. Thing. I could have used a punch, couldn't I? And just done a little circle, but no. I've got to make my life difficult. But, you know, I like fussy cutting. I find it really therapeutic and I love the idea that I don't need to have every single die for every single stamp. Because what that does for me is it stretches my budget and then I can afford maybe the nicest ones and the more expensive ones because I'm not buying as many. I'd rather buy the stamps because I'm building a bit of a library. I love how when they're all lined up with the stamp cases, <laughs> it's like a little library of books. I love it. Can't get enough of it. Can't get enough of it. But um, yeah, I love this one. It's really pretty. Um, I'm just going to very lightly there we go that's that bit done okay and then for this bit i'm just going to rip that okay because we're not going to use all of it all right i'm not going to use all of that right let me just move those to one side a moment and then we'll find some paper to decorate this tin i think i'll start with a piece of base of white so what does it need to be let me have a think so it needs to be, let's say, three and five eighths by two and a, I'm going to do three and five eighths by two and a quarter. Again, I'm using scrap card. Three and five eighths by two and a quarter. Three and five eighths by two and a quarter. I'm sorry if the video ends up being long. Please be patient. It will be worth it when I've done a promise. Let me make sure that fits, yeah. Um, because I don't always plan all of my projects. Okay, I have an idea in my head and then I just see what happens um, because I think that is the genuine way of crafting. Um, I think if you plan it too much, it, it becomes a bit staged and I'm not a f person that likes to stage things. So I'm just distressing the edges here because the reason being the shape of that tin's a little bit curved. I'm not going to be able to match that perfectly. So I'm going to do it imperfectly on purpose. Alright, and I'm just going to keep... There we go. I'm just going to keep doing that until I'm happy with the look of it. Get rid of that. Right, so I'm going to need some red line tape. Because this is metal, I'm not going to be able to glue on it. So I'm going to use some... Some tape. Right, what do I want? Do I want to ink my... I think I'm just going to ink the edges of that. This has got pink on it, but never mind. 
will manage. Yep. Okay, and the grey will go nice with the silver colour there of that tin. Okay. That's that done. Just bob that there a minute. And just need to reach for a very light coloured green pen. I'm just going to... I'm jumping a bit from one section to another, but, you know, that's what we do, isn't it? I do, anyway. I jump from one one thing to another. I could be making a card one minute, and then uh, next thing I know, I'm making charms for a book or a journal that I've not even started. And I <laughs> seem to jump from one project to another. Um, but, um, yeah. So, I'm just using Stamping Right markers here. Um... I'm just adding some colour. I think this is even a retired one. It's just the lightest pink I could find. It's powder pink, which is retired. But it's a nice light colour, so that's why I'm using it. And I'm just colouring it all in one colour because that stamp's already got some depth in it with the grey tones, so I'm not bothered. It's not perfect. Let me just do the edge of that leaf so there's not any white showing. That'll do. Alright, so let's get back to our tin. So I'm going to put some thumb red line tape on here, hopefully it's not too bright, let me see if I can cl close my blinds a bit more. Uh, we'll be, we, we, we're chasing the sun this morning, we've got to try and get done before the sun comes up. Okay, and this should hold, just hold it to the tin. Alright. And then we'll layer and layer and layer until it looks pretty and then we're done. But these tins are awesome. You can just put sweet treats in them. I've seen people make little miniature scenes in them, which I'm going to try at Christmas. I'm going to try and do a little miniature scene. I've seen all sorts done with them. So that's that layered on there. Alright, so now I'm going to... I want to... Do I want uh, some of this? Fancy some of this? But I don't know if that's right. I could do with some of that other width pink flowers on but do, do I have any? I want some more of that. Let's have a look. I don't think I've got any left. I think I've used it all. Oh yeah. We'll use some of this. Oh no, I don't like that one. It's not right. Hold on a minute. Let me have a look what we've got. Any more pink? I think I've used it all, so we're going to have to use. We're going to have to use something else. I'm going to have to use this instead. Right. Oops! That's my alarm to tell me to hurry up. Right, so again, I'm just going to rip it, but within reason. I want it to fit. So we're going for organised messer here, okay. Alright, let me just rip that for now. Have a look. Okay. Okay, okay. Just bear with me, I'm concentrating. Let's layer that on there like so. What we're going to do is just ink it. Okay. It will all come together in the end, you will see. So I'm going to ink that. Okay. Make it look a bit grungy and a bit distressy. Okay. And then now, because we're on card, we can start and glue now. Okay, so I'll get that on there. Get it the right way up, which is that way. Alright. Okay, okay. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to layer some of this on, which is the pink. I'll just distress that one with my scissors. So I'm just using my scraps. I don't scraps up. But I don't want perfect edges. I want it to look a bit 
roughed up. Okay, and give that an ink. Just blow the white bits off, you don't want them in your ink pad. that that way so we've got the pink and the grey on that okay so now we're going to create something with our peanut and our bit of stamped mess so <laughs> let's have a look what we got um, I'll use cardstock I'm going to is that one going to be too big let me see if this will work so I'm just using scraps again okay let's have a look Will that be too big? No, nope, that'll go on nicely. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to ink all the edges of that. Okay, I've been making this kind of thing for my junk journals this week. Um, inspired by a lady called My Porch Prince um, and so this is where I've got the idea for this kind of adapting it right so now we want some of this we're just going to rip it up alright great way to use your scraps up have a look because that's just a bit big. Let's just put it down a little bit. Alright, so we've got that there. Let's get that inked. Okay. Um, when you ink the edges of each piece, it'll make them stand out. That's why we're doing it. So they don't all just melt into each other. They'll look like, the, you know, the layers will show. Okay. Mm -mm get that on there and stick that in my circle so I've just used a one and three quarter inch circle punch I'm just randomly sticking on bits <laughs> and now I'm going to rip up some of this I'll save the rest of that to make some more with all right I'm just going to rip a piece of that a bit more give that an ink Da, da, nearly done. I need to hurry up because I've got to start work soon. <laughs> I'm early morning crafting before work. And then I've got these little words which are called moments, which are from I did get these are like a digi, um, a digital finger. That are from my stash. But I mean, you could stamp any word you wanted, really. Again, I'm I'm distressing it. I think I might just trim it down as well. I'm, going, I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, I don't know where that went. It's flown across my craft room. <laughs> I'll find it later when I'm cleaning up. And then we'll ink that. Okay. Ink it. Glue it. Stick it there. Having it just hanging off a little bit. Okay. Then, I mean, you could put these on dimensionals. I'm just going to glue it straight on to there. So I've glued that straight onto my tin. And then I'm just going to get my flower. I'm just going to ink the edges of that a little bit so we've not got as much white showing. Okay, and I'm going to stick that on there. There we go. Alright, it always comes together in the end. You yeah, know, it's called organised chaos. And there you go. There's a lovely decorated tin lid with a lovely little mini journal inside. How cool is that? I'm really pleased with how that turned out, to be honest. And it does fit. And we've got our little cute ribbon bind in there. Like I say, you can put a little tag. And then that will go in your tinny. And close it. And you've got a lovely little gift. 
to send to somebody or to swap. Go and give it a try. I'll leave all the links on my blog of the measurements and where you can buy these. You can get these from my Stamping Up shop in sets of four. Alright, go and have some fun. Thanks for watching. Bye.